funnel preparations. So the last thing we need to do is to um, create some basic directories for the initial builds. So we do that like that. Well, before we carry on again, because it's got the dollar LFS in it, I'm just going to double check that LFS is still active. It is. So I can paste that in. You can see the directories that have been created there. Create a directory for the tools, which is the tool chain directory. And then we add an LFS user. And just a warning in case there's issues, this is modifying the host system. So if you are on a system that is live or it's used by somebody else or something like that, just be aware that you are adding a user and a group to that system. Change the password of the LFS user. That's okay. And then grant full access to all the directories under LFS by making LFS the owner. So this gives LFS access to all these directories we've just created. Um, it does say about this problem here. I have seen it once. I didn't know how to fix it. But it does say that you can enter the FG command to fix the issue. So I have seen that happen once or twice, but not very often. And now we're going to become the LFS user. And we're going to modify some of the environmental aspects about the LFS user. So we're going to create some information there for it. And some more information here. And it explains what all these settings are down here. <clears throat> um, what it does mention here, but it does mention on the next page, is that we can actually modify this file to, I'll just jump forward to it actually, to set an environment variable to tell the compiler how many jobs we want running concurrently when it's compiling. So if we actually edit this bash rc, uh, script this uh, configuration file and put this information in here I've got four cores so I'll just copy and paste this if you've got more or less you'll want to change that four to reflect the number of cores you've got available save that that means now that whenever we log in as the LFS user that environment variable will be set um, several commercial distributions add an undocumented instantiation of etc Bash, bash RC, uh, and it basically affects the user's environment. So it recommends to run this command, and this will actually change the name of this file. So again, if somebody else on the system might be needing this file, bear in mind that this will change the name of that file, and it may come become inaccessible to them. So that's worth bearing in mind. Let's do a copy there. Yeah, uh, invariably on Linux from scratch, uh, sorry, on Gen 2, this change is not needed. And you can see it's not produced any output there, even though the verbose option has been provided to MV. So we know that no changes have been made. If we now do source bash profile, it'll pick up all these changes we've made for the LFS user. Oh, right, OK, I've got to do copy. And if we do echo make file, there, sorry, make flags, you'll see it's set to minus J4 because it's now in, despite the fact that I set it explicitly there, it is actually in the dot bash profile. So, for example, if I do control D there and exit, log back in as LFS, rerun that command, you can see it's definitely been set in the profile. So it's about uh, SBUs, uh, static build units, or standard build units, I think it stands for now. It used to be static bash unit. Uh, it's only a guide. I say this every time. It's only a guide. They they can be quite inaccurate, but they course, can also be quite accurate. I would tend to look at them not in terms of this package is, say, four and a half SBUs, and that one's five SBUs, so that one's 
half more than that one. But look at them in terms of if it's less than one SBU, it's going to be really quick. It's going to be a matter of minutes or less. If it's going to be in the range of, say, two, three, four or five, it's going to be maybe half an hour or so. Uh, obviously depending what your SPU is and if it's anything bigger than that then it's going to be hours and hours um, it's really I think an SPU would be better better replaced with something like quick medium and slow something like that as a like a tiered way of rating the packages that in trying to calculate them specifically that they they are specific so assume they're going to be accurate they unfortunately aren't that accurate. They can be, like I say, way out. So it might be better if the SBUs are replaced with something like, you know, as I say, slow, medium and fast, something like that, perhaps, as, as a rating, just to give you an idea as... Because I find, like, if it's going to be within a minute or two or five minutes, you'll stay at the keyboard. If it's going to be hours, you'll know that you can leave the keyboard and go and do something else. If it's going to be, say, half an hour, you can go and get a cup of tea, have a cup of tea and come back again. So that that would probably be a better rating. In, in pers- that's my personal point of view. But uh, as I say, just take them with a pinch of salt. But basically, it's the time it takes to build uh, the first package, which is bin utils, you take that as a reference. So if it took 10 minutes and the next package takes two SBUs, then you know two times the 10 minutes, 20 minutes, that the next package should take 20 minutes to build. Like I say, it might actually be 15 minutes. It might be 25 minutes, but it gives you a very rough idea. Don't don't use it as a an accurate way of uh, getting how long a package would take to build. Um, it says here about test suites. Uh, don't run test suites until we're in chapter eight, where we're building the actual system. As it says, they're pointless here for various reasons, uh, including they probably can't run on on the cross compiler. There's also something here about the pseudo terminals. Um, they need to be set in the kernel. Uh, some more information there about that. And there's something here about test logs. Uh, and, that, you know, some do fail, but they're not critical. Gen- generally, if you get a few failures, it's probably not anything to worry about. If you're getting a shed load of failures, um, then that probably means something's gone wrong. 